Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you my experience with this premium motherboard coming from Asus Tank known as the ROG Maximus ZSM90 Hero. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Asus Singapore to have provided this board for me to share with you guys. Starting with the unboxing, now this box is pretty big and it's well protected with all the components inside. Let me just show you. First, you will be seeing this plastic cover which protects the motherboard below it. See, this is how it looks like. Now I'll go in depth on the motherboard later just to show you the rest of the stuff inside this box. And on my left, these are all the accessories which I will go in depth later. And on my left, you will be ushered with a BIB card. Now this is a PCIe card whereby you can add additional two more M.2s which is generation 5 and this is the whole heatsink. In fact, this whole card is known as the ROG Hypo M.2 card. Besides this, you will be provided with this thumb drive. Now, if you purchase this board, please do not lose this thumb drive. As I have measured, the capacity is 25 gig, which is pretty, pretty hefty. So it's a good thing that they provided this. And I've checked inside this container right, are many all the drivers, the uh, armory crate, and such on. Now, right below this punch here, you'll be provided with a keychain, very nice keychain. The storage instruction about the ASU web storage. A leaflet of stickers. and the instruction guide, or should I say, instruction manual. These are the accessories starting on my left. This is the Wi-Fi antenna. As you can see, you can swivel. And this is magnetic. See, it connects to the metal. Now whereby this is connected at this end, right? You connect this to your Wi-Fi on your motherboard and this, you can just clip it anywhere that's metal and you can swivel this. A pair of SATA cable, which two of each is right angle and the other two is straight. An extension ARGB cable followed by all these rubber grommets for your M.2 there's a total of 3 and these are additional M.2 latch which I will show you later in the event let's say the latch on your motherboard is damaged you can replace it with this M.2 screws and bolt, or should I say nut. This is Q-Connect meant for your front I.O. which is your power switch, your recess switch, your hard disk LED and such. Additional thermal pad for your M.2. Now these two are frame for your fans if you intend to place a let's say VRM fan this is how it looks like so you can place a 40 mm fan or a 20 mm fan as for this it's only meant for 20 mm fans this is meant to blow your rams which i'll show you later now earlier on i mentioned about this hypo m.2 m.2 card it's fast this whole heat sink is fastened by four screws which you can see over here one two three and four which are this and it does come with washer so make sure you don't do not lose them so once you have removed the four screws right you'll be able to take out the uh, whole heat sink and this heat, heat sink itself right is with thermal pad i've actually tried one on a five generation five it does work so total you can place two see this is how it looks like 
This is how the motherboard looks like. The design is very straightforward. I like the embedded logo over here, which is not a sticker. In fact, it's embedded to the armor shell of the M.2. Same goes to this label here on the armor M.2 shield. And the only thing that is stick onto this board is only the top section where you have the I.O. over here, which says Maximus Hero, and over here, which is mirror finish. Now, at this top section here on the rear I.O., right, this is where the ARGB will go, which is very nice, not overdose. Besides this, looking at the design of the pin stack, right, it's well done, see? And it's very chunky. Now, at the back of this motherboard, it has a back plate, see? And this will form the rigidity of the PCB. And this back plate, right, does have a purpose. Let me just show you. See? It has a thermal pad on the VRM. Same goes to this side. See? There's a thermal pad inside which touches the uh, VRM and the back plate. So this back plate, in fact, acts as a thermal absorption to dissipate more heat off from the VRM. Now, this is an ATX motherboard, whereby the measurements are as follow, starting from here all the way to here is 243 millimeter. And from here to here is 300 millimeter. Now, as for the thickness, of the rear I.O. and the hissing over here, right? Which some of you might want to know. Now, as you can see, right, this is protruding out compared to the hissing over here. So the measurements from here to the motherboard is 45 millimeter. And from the hissing top to the motherboard is at 40 millimeter. Earlier on, I mentioned to you during the accessory introduction whereby you have this two frame over here this is meant to blow the uh, ramps and this is for your vrm and how it's been done right you can attach a 40 mm fan or a 20 mm fan at the top over here and over here you have this screw hole which makes use of the motherboard screw on to the uh, standoff so we can place this hole to here see and it holds in place where your fence is actually above this uh, plate to blow your VRM. And as for this, right, which is meant for your RAMs over here, so you place the fence over here and you keep it this way using the two motherboard screw holes and the screws to hold on to the uh, standoff. With this, right, you mount it over here. See the two holes that matches? And you can place over here and you might be wondering that hey is it going to block your pwm fan headers over here no it will not in fact you can rock underneath here so that you will just go through and you can just plug on the uh, fan headers this motherboard only support intel processor from generation 12 all the way to 14 but do take note if you purchase a 14 gen Intel processor, you will need to update the BIOS. And you don't have to worry that you have to plug a 13th gen or a 12th gen in order to flash the BIOS. As there is a flashback BIOS button at the back, you can go without a processor, you just purchase a 14th gen, flash the BIOS through the uh, BIOS flashback button and you can use the 14th gen processor. The power phase of this motherboard is 20 plus 1 plus 2 and each with 90M chokes. And this is being dissipated on all this VRM heat sink, which is pretty chunky. And these are made of aluminium. This is the 17 socket. And this is how it looks like. Now at all times, right, if you did not place any processor on it, make sure that this is closed so that to prevent you from denting the pins and you can't use the motherboard. So make sure you close this at all times if you don't place a processor. At the bottom section over here, right, these are your DIMM slot where you plug in your DDR5 RAMs. Make sure it's DDR5 and not DDR4. And it goes with dual channel and at a max capacity of 192 gig. And it does have a max XMP profile of 7800.
bus speed. Now, moving along this section over here, right, you'll be provided with three PCIe slots where these two slots are supported by the processor. The top and the second slot are running on X16 and the last one is X4. And there are a total of three M.2, which is over here. One, two, and three. Now, earlier on, I told you that there is this M.2 latch, which I will just zoom in and to show you. See, this is the latch. So when you place the M.2 right, you can just lock it in place. In the event, if this is broken, right, you can replace it with the spares that comes with the motherboard. As how the M.2 are being controlled, starting with the top slot, this is a Gen 5 and backward compatible to Gen 4 M.2. This is controlled by your processor. As for the bottom two over here, these are Gen 4, which is controlled by the Z790 chipset. I made a mistake earlier on by saying that this whole armor shield right, is meant for M.2 heatsink. It's not. It's only catered for your Z790 chipset. Now, talking about the armor shield itself, as you can see when I remove it, right, there are thermal pads over here. Same goes to the bottom. There are thermal pads over here. So if you're using single channel M.2 right, with the chipset at the birth of the M.2, you remove off this thermal pad and to you know, fix it in place, whereby the heat absorption is through this metal, whole metal aluminum plate. Same goes to this. And if you are to use a dual channel M.2 with chipset on both sides of the M.2, right, you can remove off this thermal pad. By the way, below this thermal pad, right, is with a whole strip of aluminum heat sink. Same goes to this too. So we can just slot the uh, dual channel M.2. When it comes to heat dissipation, right, it not only absorb from the top, but also at the bottom. So that will cool down your M.2 further. Now, on the armor shield itself, right, you don't have to worry that when you unscrew it, these screws will go off because these are captive. See? I like to talk about the GPU placement, be it whether you have a single card plugging here, the top slot or the second slot, you will run an X16. If you have dual graphic card to occupy both PCIe slot at the top and the second one, both will run on 8X. Now, assuming you have a single graphic card plugged to the top slot, and to add on two generation 5 M.2 on this PCIe card. If you want to plug this on the second slot with the first slot with the GPU, this M.2 slot over here will be disabled. And even if you change the uh, graphic card to the second slot and this Hyper M.2 card to the first slot, right, this will be disabled too. Now, if you were to place a single card at the top or at the bottom, having this Gen 5 uh, M.2 card plugged to the last one. Now, you can use this slot, not an issue, but all this right will be running on Gen 4. So this, you can't set it to Gen 5. Take note on this. Before I go in details of the connection point and the headers on the motherboard itself, starting off with the audio, this board is equipped with a Supreme FX 7.1 channel high definition surround sound audio and it's making use of the ALC 4082 codec. Now this switch here this is meant to control the PCIe slot and the most top section and the top M.2 which these two are controlled by the processor. Now what this switch does at auto right it will allow these two socket which is the PCIe and the M.2 slot to detect what kind of generation devices is making use of. Let's say for Gen 5, right, you will just switch auto Gen 5. If it's Gen 4, you will just auto switch Gen 4. Now, if you do set this switch to the center, which is middle, there will be an indicator on the LED at the back, which is selected in green. And this is to set your both slot at the top to generation 4. So even if you plug generation 5 right, you will just read generation 4. So take note of this. Next will be the lower section, which is generation 3. And again, the back, there is an LED that will light in yellow. So all this indicator will tell you that what generation you have set on this two slot over here. 
by all times, I would advise you to set it to auto. Let the uh, motherboard detect what generation devices that is plugged to your M.2 slot and the PCIe slot at the top. Next will be the front I.O. audio connector, a 12 pin RGB connector, followed by two addressable 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connectors. Right at the top here, right, this connector was not listed on the instruction manual. I wouldn't have a clue what this is. Next will be three fan connectors, which is meant for your case fan. These are all rated one ampere, which is four pin PWM connectors. Followed by two USB 2.0 connector. And this is the T sensor where you plug the uh, sensor probe to the tank. Things like the Z790 chipset or your M.2 tools or maybe your graphic card and such. This, I don't have to say, is the CMOS battery. If it's, I mean, it's, if it's discharged, right, you can just replace it. Next, all this over here, right, this is meant for custom water looping. In fact, this is a water pump connector that has a rating of 3 ampere. And over here, right, which is meant for custom water looping where you have devices that detect the water flow in and out. So these are the whole section over here in grey. Now, this is meant for your front I.O. power switch on and your recess switch, your power LED and your hard disk LED. Moving to the front, you'll be provided with two USB 3.2 connectors for your front I.O. And there are a total of six SATA ports. Next will be a Type C connector. Now, this Type C connector right, runs full speed at 20 gigabits per second. And you can make use of this to charge your mobile phone. Now, take note, this is meant for your front I.O., right? Type C. If you want to charge, fast charge your mobile devices, right? Make sure that you supply the uh, six pin connector from your power supply to this plug over here, which is six pin. This will enable this type C to be at 60 watt charging rate. So take note on this. Next will be a 24 pin connector for your PSU to be connected. I mean your PSU 24 pin connector to be connected to here to supply the power to your motherboard. Followed by a flex button. Now this flex key button is meant for you to program short um, controls like reset or maybe power down or maybe you know some other stuff that you want to, to set as in like overclocking or such, you can make use of this key. Next will be a start button. This is useful whereby if you want to test your system or should I say your motherboard and system outside the case in an open bench, instead of plugging to the front IO power switch, right, you can make use of this switch to turn on your machine. Next will be a reset switch followed by a three pin five volt ARGB connector. At the top over here, this is the debug LED, whereby it flashes all the numbers to indicate that what are the parts that is not meeting the criteria or having some faults, you will need to rectify it. Now moving at the top, there are a total of four PWM fan connectors, whereby the first one is your case fan, the second one is meant for your water pump, next will be CPU fan and followed by the last one which is CPU op. Now in the event if you want to do push-pull configuration right, instead of controlling individual PWM right, both the CPU fan and the CPU op they share the same PWM settings. Meaning you say if you set, I mean once you set the CPU fan to the fan curve right, the CPU op will follow. And all this over here right, the headers as in like the uh, case fan, the pump, and the CPU fan connectors, all these are running at one ampere. Next will be the overvote protection. This is right now enabled, meaning you say, sorry, overvote protection, this is disabled, as in like you can't draw any more power off from the PSU to supply the uh, V core to your processor. If it is enabled, right, meaning you say you can go beyond the uh, V-call settings, which is above 1.5 and such. So 
at all times make sure you do not touch this leave it as it is okay probably i should to show you this see do not touch this next you have two 8 pin eps connector at all times it's up to you if you are not doing drastic overclocking right one will be enough this is how the rear io looks like starting from the left top this is a clear cmos button at the bottom is a bios flashback button as mentioned to you you do not need a processor or anything you just plug the power supply have the firmware plug to this port which is actually the thumb drive then when you press on this bios flashback right you will react upon this port and you will just update the bios without having you to plug the processor rams or such you just need power that's it and the firmware of the thumb drive next will be a hdmi port this is version 2.1 and this is only catered for your processor integrated graphic card and do take note that if you are using a intel processor which it, which has a kf version right you can't use this at all they'll be given total of nine usb type a port as you can see over here or are version 3.2 with the blue highlighted over here right this are version sorry generation one which has a max transfer rate of 5 gigabits per, per seconds else for the red ones over here this are generation 2 which has a max transfer rate of 10 gigabits per seconds at the bottom you have three type c port now the first two port over here these are thunderbolt ports where it has a transfer rate of 40 gigabits per seconds else for this this is type c generation 2 which is having a transfer speed of 10 gigabits per seconds now if you want to use full speed as in like 20 gigabits per seconds right make use of the front io type c or you can use the thunderbolt port above the uh, type a usb port this is a 2.5 intel nick your wi-fi 6e connectors and over here this is the audio 7.1 channel where you have this as the center speaker subwoofer this is for the rear speaker and spdif out followed by line in for line out which is actually for your speaker front speakers and your mic in just to show you where the argb is which is only here when i turn on right you will see the rog logo is flashing and there's a fusion rog behind the actual word rog with the logo and it will fusion and change to hero and on my top right you will see that the start button and the flex key or the flex button is littered white and earlier on i mentioned that to control this two with the switch at the bottom if i have to switch it to the center it will glow green see this is the indication of generation 4 meaning you say this two slot over here the m.2 and the pcie slot will be set to generation 4. if i have to switch it to gen 3 it will turn to yellow This is the UEFI of this motherboard, which is the Maximus Z790 Hero. Now, as this interface is easy mode, whereby it will show you the time and the configurations over here. Now, if you click on this time itself, you can set the time and date and the year, and of course the time, and you can just save it. And you can change languages depending on what you are from, where you are from. For example, let's say you're in Chinese. You can just set to Chinese, all this will change into Chinese. I'll just put this back as English. Now for AI OC guide, it will go through the description and letting you know what are the things that you can be doing. That's like letting the system to determine on the overclock. Now if you do enable this right, take a look over here. See, it's AI optimized. But of course right now i'm going to set it to normal so this is how it works and for search right for example let's say you want some key functions like the fan or maybe monitoring the temp right you can just type in see it will show you the uh, functions or features on the model itself 
Now as for Aura, this you can read through. This is to disable the uh, ARGBs, the LED that is indicated on your motherboard, like the start switch, the uh, fax switch and such. Resizable bar, I believe most of you know what this is for. This is meant for your coffee cart. You can turn it off or turn it on. Now for MEMTAS86, I will talk about this, whereby this motherboard has a very special function. Once you have done all your overclocking on your memories and such, and you want to do an internal test, instead of going to Windows, right, you can make use of this application, which is built in to the ASU motherboard. In fact, in some of the ASU motherboard, they have this MEM test, which I like very much. Now, the test over here is telling you the information of your processor, your RAMs, and such. And of course, your this is your RAMs and your storage and right on top here this is the cpu temperature the uh, vcore that is using and your motherboard temperature and for this ai overclock which i showed you earlier right you can switch between normal or to let the system do the overclocking for you the exemplary profile right now is disabled you can enable it to enable your rams xmp profile and on the fan profile right this is to show you what are the fans that you plug to the motherboard Things like your AIO, your pump, your chassis fan, and your CPU fan. Now, right now I'm actually using a heat sink, or should I say air cooler. That's why you only, you, you only see the uh, CPU fan. And over at this section here, the uh, Intel Rapid Storage is meant for you to run RAID. By default, it's off. And of course, you can set the fan curve by clicking to this Q fan control, where you can select which are the fans that is plugged to the headers on your motherboard and to do your curve over here. So we can actually do manual if you want to, then you can just set accordingly to what you want and to apply. If not, you can make use of the arm. profile. This is full speed, this is turbo, and this is silent. Okay, I'm just gonna exit this. Now, besides this, right, you can select boot priority. If let's say you have certain drives like um, I mean, you have populated certain amount of SSD and M.2s and some if you have other OS like Windows 10 or maybe Linux, you can set the priority. It's just a drag and drop, quite simple. So when you do that, right, whatever is actually located at the top will be the priority drive. Meaning you say, let's say I have a second drive, which is Linux, I drag it up. To become the uh, top um, profile right it will load into linux instead of windows now besides this right you can toggle to the advanced mode now i'm not going to go in depth on the advanced mode but some of the functions that you can play with now for example my favorite which i often make use of the offset to actually lower down the temperature so normally i'll just 0.05 millivolt things like this and besides this you can control your DRAM voltage and such onboard devices things like your audio you can disable them if you don't use it if you have a audio interface like myself I'll just disable it so this will save up all the power consumption and these are the rest of the configuration. I'm not going to go deep into it. You can have a look. Okay. Now, on main itself, it's just telling you the information. You can set the language. You can set the security. Now, security means that your BIOS configuration, right? You wouldn't want anybody to touch. You can set it administrator password. And in the event, if let's say you have siblings and you don't want them to know your password, you can set user password. So for them to access to the UEFI. Next will be the extreme tweaker. Now for this section, right, a lot you will need to figure out. In fact, this board is meant for overclocking. So you can set numerous things like your ASO multi-core enhancement. See, you can set whether to disable to set it to enable everything with a limit or to set it with a limit but at a fixed throttle temperature meaning you say once it reach 90 right it will not go beyond that 
and your clock frequency on the CPU itself will be lowered down. Other than that, all this, uh, all the uh, manual configuration, the clock frequency and such. Oh, by the way, this is where you set the XMP profile. I've set it to XMP1, which allows me to run my RAMs at this default XMP profile. Other than that, what I normally play with is the um, internal CPU power management whereby you have this long duration and the short duration. Now often I will go below because I know that this processor, right, as you can see here, is running default 253. You can lower this down. For me, for this 13700K, right, I will normally run at 280, 238 just to lower down the temperature and it will not lose performance. This is like, if I say the base uh, clock, right, is at 5.3 gigahertz it will still run 5.3 gigahertz but at a lower wattage this is for the long duration meaning you say throughout now for short duration you can set it to auto meaning you say it's just a short burst random burst that you can go up to 5.6 5.7 and such so you can set for me i'll just leave it auto or at times right if i want to right i'll synchronize with what the limit i've done with the long duration but you can select to set at auto and the rest are load line calibration and such i will not go in depth into it probably you need to do some research next will be the advanced mode where you have the platform miscellaneous configuration that shows you all the uh, settings like your dmi settings this is useful when you are using an intel graphic card okay where you have to set all this which I'm not going to go in there. Besides this, you have the CPU configuration. See? It will tell you what are the um, configuration that's done automatically by default. And the performance score telling you what is actually going on. All the stats, etc. Now for Intel virtual technology, right? This is enabled by default. Meaning you say you'll be using things like VMware, um, Sandbox and such, just leave it enabled. If you're not using it, you can disable this. Now the rest are for you to set as you want, like per call and such, E call and B calls. Now system agent configuration, this is whereby you enable the, again, VTD, this is meant for your virtual machine, or should I say VMware and Sandbox memory configuration you can map if you want to things like that and these are the specification on your m.2 drive which is the i mean socket which is near the processor and the pcie slot which is also controlled by the processor so you can set them accordingly to the generation see now Back to where I am now. PCH configuration. This is meant for you to set the speed again on your Z790 chipset, which is the lower portion. See, and this was the last. This is the uh, last PCIe slot, which is up to Gen 4. Storage wise. Now you can set the SATA controller to be enabled to or disable, meaning you say the six SATA ports. And for the M.2 itself, okay, you can rename them if you want to, so you won't get confused which M.2 is to which ML2 when you want to reformat your OS and to, you know, build up a fresh OS. Good function hot swap you can set it to enable if you just want to you know run the system and you want to pull the m.2 out not an issue but i wouldn't advise you to do that especially for gen 5 m.2 as for sata not a problem because the transfer rate is pretty slow about six gig per second so we can actually do hot swap meaning you say when you're you know in windows itself right and you can just eject from the icon then 
you can remove all the storage. PCH firmware configuration. I just set it to enable by default. Thermal configuration. See what kind of tuning this is. You can set to enable if you want to. Now the rest I won't go in deep into it. Probably you can have a look just to let you see. Now this is actually the uh, Thunderbolt port. The two rear type C Thunderbolt port. Trust computing. This is meant for encryption and such on your motherboard. Okay, the rest I don't think I'm going to go deep into it. You can have a look. Now for APM configuration, this is useful whereby you have connected the uh, LAN cable physically to your PC and your PC is, I mean this motherboard is tied to your local host. Okay, it's more like network mambo jumbo. So what I do is that I wanted to have wake up on LAN. So when I trigger the AMP, right, I will just set this power on standby PCIe to enable. So as and when, when I want to trigger remotely outside to my PC to turn on, right, I can just turn it on when this is enabled. Now onboard devices, I believe I've shown you this before to set the, to set the uh, audio the LAN and such, if you want to enable or disable them, just to save energy. Now come to monitor, where you have the first section. Temperature monitor is to tell you the uh, CPU temperature, the motherboard temperature, VRM temperature, chipset temperature, T sensor, if you do have a sensor probe connected to the header itself, which I showed you earlier on the motherboard, you can place this anywhere on your motherboard, be it your graphic card, your processor, your RAMs, and etc. Besides this monitoring, right? Oh, by the way, the T sensor temperature when you plug to the T sensor two pin, right? The readings you can get it from hardware info or even through here. You will show. And these are the water in and water out, which I mentioned to you, the gray section of the area during the uh, introduction on the connection point, so you can monitor through here then these are the RAMs that is populated at the slot which is A2 and B2 showing you the temperature now fan speed control this is to show you all the fans that is connected to your motherboard fan headers telling you what are the RPMs that is running voltage monitor it shows you the CPU we call the uh, 12 volt what are you obtaining through the PSU and such? Things like your 5 volt or 3.3 volt off from the PSU. So these are the readings. Next will be Q fan configuration, whereby these are manual configuration. For example, let's say this is the... Oh, this is actually my fan configuration. I mean my air cooler fans so I can set to PWM mode and to set it to full now let me just take you to the monitor itself now as you can see it ramps up on the CPU fan speed these are my heat sink I mean the air cooler fans and the profile right now I have set to full speed which is 1600 plus you find it too noisy, just all you need to do is just to go to Q fan configuration. Then you set it either manually, you can up, you can set, you know, showing you the steps like which temperature is running and how much percentage of the fan itself. So, as earlier on, right, on Q fan, I've set this to manual, but you can make use of the profile again, as mentioned, silence or turbo. So it still runs on the background when you are operating your system, knowing that oh you have triggered your fan curve to run at this speed and such on the case fan or the CPU fans. Now this is for tuning the fans as mentioned to you. 
you know, cause at this lower section over here, right, where you see water pump, AIO pump. Now, AIO pump is at the top, where I mentioned to you earlier, which is near the uh, top VRM, just beside it, or should I say above the RAMs. So this is the AIO pump, which is one ampere. Else at the bottom, right, there is one water pump that is dedicated for custom water looping. You can control the curve over here. Other than that, boot as usual. These are the priority, I mean, drive that you wanted to boot. See, you can set the boot priority over here. Now, if you are playing Valorian and it needs you to enable the secure boot in this motherboard, you can just go to secure boot, then to enable. Okay, either standard or more, I mean, custom. Other than that, you have the tools where you flash your BIOS. Instead of using the BIOS flash rack, you can boot up to this interface, plug in your USB thumb drive first before you do this. Then once you've done that, right, you can just flash your BIOS. You can even roll back your BIOS, things like that. Now for reset, see, as I mentioned to you, the flex key right on the motherboard, you can set to this function. Now as for exit, you either load optimize default, reset everything, reconfigure again, or once you've done all the settings right, you can save and change, not an issue. Or you, if you do have done a lot of settings, but you wouldn't want to maintain the settings, you can just discard. Now. Right now, this system is up and running where I connected the HDMI to my monitor. Besides this, right, as I mentioned, there are two Thunderbolt port at the back, which is Type-C. You can make use of this Thunderbolt port to project out to a portable monitor. See, I've connected the Type-C to the Thunderbolt. And if I were to plug this in, right, Instantly, it will load. And this is what you get. See, I can control through here too. So this is one thing that is of a neat feature whereby in the event you want a portable display just to display your stats and such, right? Besides your monitor, right? You can use the Type-C. And this Type-C, in fact, is powered or should I say Thunderbolt port is normally powered and able to project without plugging additional you know, um, power connectors to the portable monitor, which is a good thing. When I first unbox this motherboard out of the box, I feel premium as it's well packed. And when I look at the board, my goodness, it's so sleek, simple design, not you know, all the logos all over the shot, which I really do not like. And I like the simple fact that the uh, prints are imprinted to the armor shield, except for the plate over here and over here. And another bonus point is that the ARGB effects is only glowing on the rear I.O. And not everywhere, which is pretty sleek. Now, besides this, right, I like the VRM kit sync. They do function very well. As I was monitoring my processor, which is actually a 13700K, drawing by default, which is above 253 watt, it's around 286 and so. But when I touch the VRMs, right, they are cool, not hot. So if you intend to overclock, right, it will definitely excel, not an issue. And if you worry that, you know, not enough cooling, besides the uh, AIO or the uh, air cooler, right, they have thought about this, giving you fan frames. One, which is for your VRM, where you can attach a 40mm or a 20mm fan to make use of the uh, motherboard holes over here. See, the standoff to hold the fan so that you can blow direct air to the uh, VRM. Same goes to your RAM. You can place it over here, placing two. 20 mm fans over here just to draw cool air and to blow off the hot air from the rams itself 
and you might be wondering can i plug both at the same time not a problem you just overlap that's it see nice touch besides this on the vrm itself right i like the way that they have done the uh, armor shield all are covered for the m.2s and if you think that having three m.2 is not enough right you can pluck the m.2s on this pcie sort i know it's a bit daunting to pluck this but it does its function whereby this beefy hit thing where you can place two you know simply plug into generation 5 m.2s without having to worry that it might overheat because of this very beefy heat sink which help the cooling and besides this right the functions of the uh, inbuilt buttons like the start button and this fax key itself you can set you can set the uh, fax key which i have not gone into detail probably you can take a look at the uh, instruction manual on this and also the debug leds or should i say the uh, digital code where it shows the numbers to show you the errors of where you should actually fix now one thing that i missed out which is this button over here now this is actually for your pcie slot where you sort your graphic card and many times right you will need to reach out inside to unlatch before you can remove the graphic card but with this mechanism right see when i press this is moving it will release and you can just take it out now if you were to ask me if this motherboard is meant for gamers for overclockers or for content creation it's meant for all in fact as a content creator myself i find that this board is pretty good plenty of storage including inclusive of the six SATA port over here and best part is i have thunderbolt ports over here in fact i don't really i will not be using the uh, type c 10 gigabits per second over here in fact i'll be using the front so i have i mean so i can make use of my enclosure the uh, m.2 enclosure right to transfer at the rate of 20 gigabytes per second and for this two tunnel board right i've shown you illustrated to you if you want a additional portable display you can just plug to this and to plug on the portable device and you can have an additional screen at any point of time and besides this this is pretty heavy due to the fact that besides the uh, brm heat sink over here right there is this full back plate which also serves the purposes where i show you the thermal pads is between the vrm and the cold plate so that will dissipate heat even more so probably this is the reason why when i run this 13700k right the vrm when i touch it right it's not even hot it's like lukewarm or should i say towards the cold um, side which is well built and on top of it right they have supplied you <laughs> amazingly okay this is not nothing major but i feel appreciative that they have done all the drivers and all the um, armor crate application and inclusive of the linux ios um, configuration right on this thumb drive and this thumb drive is not just 2 gig 4 gig they graciously give you a 25 gig thumb drive fantastic and i also test the audio fantastic 7.1 i can plug to my rear i can plug to my center speakers subwoofer and also the front speakers if you have a very good 7.1 um surround sound speakers and on top of it right if you want to charge your mobile phone right you can just plug your power supply six pin connector which is actually your um you know i mean your graphic card connector to this six pin and you will provide 60 watt for you to charge fast charge your mobile as tested on the mobile itself right for my iphone um, 14 it takes okay at flat it takes me less than 45 minutes to charge it full not a problem fantastic now there is something else which i do not like about this spot is first of all i can't find any clear cmos button on the motherboard itself 
So if this is to mount in the case ray, if I want to reset the CMOS, I will need to pull out my case just to reach the back to see the uh, buttons, which is the uh, clear CMOS. That's the thing, whereby these two buttons are so close to each other, so I might be accidentally, if let's say I do not pull out my case, or to turn to the front, right, I might be accidentally pressing the uh, BIOS flashback button. Unless they have designed the button to another area, I would say that the BIOS flashback, right, probably place it over here. Then I know that, okay, without pulling the case out, right, most to this end, right, is actually the clear CMOS, and I will not be touching the uh, clear CMOS button. So this is actually one of the flaws. And another thing is that, I mean, at this time of era whereby all the fans that you purchase, right, it's above rating about 0.35 ampere to 0. Point, you know, more than that, some is even 0. 0.5 ampere, like the B quiet fans. I don't understand why are all these haters still at 1 ampere, which I hope that ASU will improve on it. The only one that is having 3 ampere right, is only this, which is actually meant for the custom water cooling. So all these connectors over here, right, the fan chassis, or the 4-pin PWM, all these are rated 1 ampere. And if you worry by plugging your liquid AIO itself, right, make sure that you connect to the AIO pump connector because that is more than, as what I learned from ASO technician, the AIO pump right, is more than 1 ampere. It's probably about 1.5 or so, but the rest are 1 ampere. So if you want to daisy chain your fans, right, make sure that you know the amperage of your fans before you connect to this motherboard. So I hope that, as mentioned, ASU will improve on it, having all this as 2 ampere instead of 1 ampere. Other than that, I don't see any flaws on this uh, motherboard itself. It's a pretty good solid board that runs cool. I like the pattern. That's of all I can project out using the Thunderbolt port. There are two, which bonus point 40 gigabits per second. I can transfer a lot of files, I mean, large files, right, in a short period of time with a Thunderbolt device, or should I say Thunderbolt hard disk. All right, hope you guys have actually enjoyed what I've shared with you. And I'd like to thank ASU to have provided this bot for me to share with you guys. And if you guys are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See you.